Welcome back, everyone, to Help, We're Stuck in a Box. Uh, I'm Michael. I'm here with Nito, one of our new co-hosts. Uh, How's it going, guys? I'm hoping that everybody is doing good. I know it's been quite a while since we've done an episode for this podcast, solely on me because I got super busy with vacation and I was gone for four weeks. Uh, so we're going to get right back into the swing of things. Uh, how you been doing, Nito? Uh, I've been doing fair to moderate, I guess. I mean, outside of having those, uh, what is it, migraines and my back going out in the past couple of weeks, I'm doing a whole heck of a lot better now. Yeah, Although, I remember you talking <laughs> about that. Yeah. Although, you know, with, we'll see how this, um, we'll see how this goes in any case. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I mean, like, uh, yeah. I went into work today to get some manager shit done. Yeah. I'm only up there for like two and a half hours. And Jesus Christ, like, they had, I don't know, maybe like 10 fucking people there at one point. Holy crap. Yeah. And Kana and I were just sitting there in the back, because of course I'm not scheduled today, but we're sitting there in the back and we're both doing our fucking learning zones, like, I don't know. Fucking, he was there for probably about 20 minutes after I started doing mine. I went in around yeah. like 1 or 2, or like 1, one thirty. But yeah, I'm now halfway done with that shit. And then oh, uh, then we just have our manager course on the 30th. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. Where do you got to go to? Uh, do you have to go anywhere for that, or is it just an online? Uh, is it just a timed online course? Uh, I have to go somewhere, but I don't have okay. information right now. They've kind of been shitty about giving it to us, but it's all good. I gotcha. Uh, who knows? Maybe at the very worst, it'll be uh, Doherty Ferry or something like that. Right. I'm not thinking it's going to be too far away. I just know it's across the highway. Mm. Kendall doesn't want to drive so i'm giving her a ride but yeah for people that don't know i'm shelling out my soul to taco bell and becoming a manager for the time being purely out of self-interest though (laughs) mind you guys because i mean this is not something that uh, a normally sane person does right i'm only doing this so that my uh hours don't get cut during the winter it's always a big concern oh yeah this is very true. So first on the agenda, what we were going to talk about, uh, shit. I had it on top of my mind. I forgot. Anyway. Uh, yes, we, we, we were, I do believe uh, we were going to talk about, um, what can be appropriate and inappropriate behavior in the workplace. <laughs> yeah. We're going to give you guys some work safety tips on how not to lose your fucking job. Uh, step number yeah. one, don't tell your coworkers, especially if you're a manager, that you would like to fuck them. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, that should go without saying, but apparently there are quite a few people out there who need that to be said to them. Yeah. And sadly, uh. we work with one of those people. Yeah. And 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 two, well, uh, another thing to um, take into account here, uh, if you're going to say something, if you are a manager and you are going to freaking say something like that, do try to make sure that the person that you're saying that to is not a minor. Yeah. <laughs> or that you're outside of work, of all places. Don't do oh, it on Lord. your fucking closing shift. They're no. stuck with you for another couple hours. Yeah, I mean, like that just expands the creep level to, oh, uh, I don't know, infinity. Yeah, there we go. So, for those of you out there that are listening that don't know what had happened and what we're talking about, one of our newest managers at Taco Bell had been counted for on the record, like during their shift, to saying to our friend Kendall that they would like to fuck her. Which is just not okay, especially since no. it's in the workplace to someone that's right. only 18, to someone that's your direct inferior, like you're the manager, they're just an employee, and you say that. 
Right. I mean, that's uh, that's a basic and classic abuse of power at yep. that point in time. Now, I do know a little bit more about the situation now. Uh, it became a legal matter. Uh, fun fact. And oh, yeah. So they were talking about it with Mary and JC and some of the other upper heads. And they were talking to him and saying, OK, well, we need to collect all like stories from that shift so they talked to everybody oh. and there wasn't enough evidence and like people's stories didn't line up enough for them to take any action basically so i just know okay. that at the meeting for whenever we talk about whatever we need to do to fix the store they are going to bring up the fact that a uh, co-worker was harassed and that we were not gonna we're not doing that at the store you know right so, in other words, it's going to be one of those situations in which, since it cannot be literally proven or corroborated, the simple fact of the matter is they are just basically going to put all of the managers through something of a course right. that is supposed to um, show what the correct behavior is in the workplace towards employees and towards other managers is right. They're going to make sure that everybody knows what you can and cannot do and what you can and cannot say. So like I already made the decision that since I'm becoming a manager, I'm not going to talk to most of the employees the way that I talk to them now. But if it's their, if they're like my close friend, like you or Johnny or Kendall or Thaddeus, you know, I'm going to still talk to them the way I talk to them now, because I know right. there's not going to be problems there if I'm talking like that. Exactly. But you're right. I mean, like, that is something to take into account. You've got to adjust the way that you're going to uh, speak to people that are going to be your charges for all intents and purposes. Right. I just think it's going to be very awkward at the fucking meeting. We're all sitting down in a circle, right? And then all of a sudden they go, yeah, so an employee of ours was harassed and said that they wanted, like they were going to be fucked by another person. Uh, and like, we're all going to know who they're talking about, even if they don't name names. Yeah. So, oh man. I just don't get it. How can, how can Jess continually, the person that had said the thing, keep in mind, come into work and not feel any shame or not show <laughs> any shame for saying what she said. Well, exactly. It's one of those things where uh, a bit of remorse can go a long way. But if you don't act in that fashion, then people pretty much automatically assume. And uh, it is, to tell you the truth from their perspective, correctly assume that they have no remorse and they don't think what they did was incorrect. Right. Just, well, let's just say that uh, they're digging themselves a hole at this point in time. Yeah, they're just burying it underneath, uh, hoping that we'll all forget. It, it's just disrespectful, one, to say something like that to someone. But it's just sad, you know? Yeah. Can you not find anyone outside of the workplace? Like, not one singular person. There's a lot of people out there. Well, I mean, like the wacky part about this is, if I understand correctly, um, Jess has got a got a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not like they uh, it, it's not like they don't have anybody. That's just that, I, yeah. That mm. is the more shocking part that that even happened in the first place because Jess has a girlfriend. I just. Like, you have to be mentally broken to do that, to say something like that, right? Oh, um, yeah, that or just not, uh, or be amazingly socially awkward when you get right down to it. I mean, I've known more than a few people that have been that way and honestly didn't know that they were, well... <laughs> being an ass yeah. until they were uh until it was pointed out to them uh repeatedly and very 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 loudly you know and even then sometimes it doesn't really work 
this is the reason this is the reason why um you know slapping someone when they do something really stupid is not necessarily the bad uh is not necessarily a bad course of action mm -hmm. i have been slapped many a time mm -hmm. in my youth for goodness sakes <laughs> and honestly that's one of the ways that you learn okay and it's like you you do this and you they haul around and slap you and you're seeing stars for a second you, when you're seeing those stars you get a chance to you know do a little bit of self-reflection right with stars you know so i mean like and you know while observing those self um you know you know when observing those stars you just basically have to say um what did I do to deserve that? Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, you know, backtrack from there. It's like, okay, so I did this and then bam, maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe I should ask before or whatnot. You, you know what I mean? It's yeah, I, not, I get you. it's, it's not supposed I'm to not, be difficult for people. Right. I, I'm, and I am in no way advocating, you know, like, um tackling somebody and you know doing the uh you know ground pound type thing no curb stomp no shit. no it, it, it just it, you know sometimes a, a slap is perfect because of the fact that a it doesn't do any real damage unless of course the person yeah. is wearing glasses uh and, and b it um because of the fact that it doesn't do a lot of damage but it does create a lot of noise and it's got a lot of shock value it can generally get somebody's attention when they're yeah you know i mean not paying it you said a slap doesn't take like cause a lot of damage but then i think about like our co-workers like raya that have uh like nose piercings and shit or face piercings <laughs> oh yeah that shit the, right the... out <laughs> Oh, this is true, but I mean, like, at that point in time, you'd have to be uh, hauling off and slapping yeah. somebody hard enough to be, you know, at that at that point in time, you might as well ball up your fist and mm -hmm. um, smack them that way. No, way what I'm saying... Uh, smack Robert. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Right, right, exactly. Now, I, I'm, and I'm not even talking about backhanding, because that's also <laughs> a no-no. You know, no hitting with the ring finger, especially um, when there is a ring present, because that is dumb. <laughs> and that's just asking for extra trouble. No, yeah. I'm a good slap across the face. You know, go for the cheek. Mm -hmm. Go for the cheek. That way, if the person happens to be wearing glasses, the glasses go flying. But will generally not bust. Right. Either, you know, um, either on impact when they hit the ground or on impact when they hit your hand. If you, you know, slap improperly, that is. Dude, I have no idea how many times my glasses have been fucking damaged. Like the, the pair I have right now, if I look at them, there's scratches all over the lenses. Oh, dude. And yeah, that type of thing happens just from, you know, cleaning your glasses, too. Right. But it... well, one of my old pairs, uh, I went playing paintball in them, and oh. uh, yeah, that happens. And I fucking yeah. shot in the head. It, the fucking mask banged against my glasses, and there's a giant scrape through around the glass. Like, oh. it actually came into the glass. We just never got them fixed. I just kept wearing them. Oh man! At least it's not as bad as Nolan losing them at the bottom of a lake and having to search for them. At least oh, I lost geez. my glasses in the ocean. I just lost them and left them there. I gotta admit, though, I mean, like that's quite a—it's uh, quite a feat to be able to find them at the bottom of, you know, the was a river or river. lake. River. That's what it was, not lake. My bad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I mean, like I've—I've I've been on many a float trip and things have been dropped and generally unless um unless the thing is insanely valuable or uh potentially poisonous you just go ahead and leave it to be left and the, the uh. strange point is that it wasn't even a normal float trip it was way more than a float trip if you're catching my drifts like oh yeah, god yeah it. and <laughs> for legal purposes i i refrain from saying anything but 
Uh, nah, he... I, I, all credit to him. Finding his glasses in a fucking river must have been difficult. Seriously. Especially when you don't have them on, so you can't see far. Everything's oh, dude, far. yeah. I mean, like, hell, I've had to do that myself, and I, 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 I mean, like, I definitely feel for him on that. Mm-hmm. But it's also the reason why I wear the uh, old grandma loop on my glasses <laughs> these days because yeah, but you I'm can like pull I can't. Like someone like me can't. I look too fucking nerdy with that shit. Oh, dude. Well, you just have to um, find the proper material to um, pull it off with. I mean, yeah. it doesn't even necess- It doesn't have to be cloth. It doesn't have to be a chain. It doesn't really. It just has to be something that fits your motif. Yeah, but you and I know that you've been working on your motif as far as uh, the cane is concerned, and I would almost and I would almost suggest you know working on a motif for like a grandma chain for your glasses to match, Mm -hmm. because dude, nothing says style better than matching accessories. See, the problem is I've got like a really weird body type, like. You know, we're both tall and lanky people, even though you're taller, but your torso is proportionate with your legs. You know, my body's not. As I refer to myself, I'm two-thirds legs, and, like, I've literally done the math, and my torso is less than twice of my legs. Huh? Like, or, well, my, whatever it was, it my torso, even if I doubled it up, was still less than my legs. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> well, let's just say that that gives you uh, a leg up in um, like foot races. Yeah, problem is that my uh, pants don't fit anymore. I keep growing. Oh them. yeah, and then Damn. my shirts also fit weird sometimes because of how long my arms are compared to my torso. Oh, I exactly. Really long, lanky arms for no reason. Dude, you know this is something that one could actually use as a segue into. Um, what was it um uh, an argument against um say the clothing that you can get at walmart versus uh clothing that is obviously outside of any of our realm of um being able to afford i.e tailored right. clothing you know now at the same time i do have to admit uh Tailored clothing does not necessarily mean that it has to be, uh, you know, bought as in um, bought tailored. Mm -hmm. It just basically means that you could get away with, say, um, buying the Wally World specials and then finding someone who actually does know how to sew or uh, on, you know, those rare occasions, you can actually find an actual tailor Mm -hmm. and then take the stuff to them. Right, make it a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, like, it's going to, it definitely is going to add to the cost of um, what you're buying. But at the same time, I do have to admit, one, you're um, giving back to a local community Mm. by um, doing the Taylor thing. And two, well, uh, you are also stepping up your self-image game. That's true. I didn't even think about it that way. Though, I gotta say, you you just rock your clothing naturally. Like, you even rocked the Pillsbury Doughboy body. <laughs> well, then again, I mean, like, Delia uh, definitely is um, too uh, praise for that um, bit right yes, there. Because... A fucking amazing job. Uh, people that don't know what I'm talking about, I'll throw the picture up, like, now or some shit. Uh, yeah, that's Nito's head on the Pillsbury Doughboy. Real, I mean, like, real fun. Our friend Delia drew it, and God, it's it's perfect. And I'll even, I'll throw up the uh picture that kind of like inspired. It. I'll throw like all three right here, or some shit, you know. And I, I'm gonna say this to tell you the honest truth that um the oh boy the Pillsbury dough me just basically looks like something that you would see on the cover of a self published rap album. Yeah, it really does. Which, you know what, to tell you the truth, almost, almost inspires me to um, try and, um, well, I got to get together with Nolan anyway, uh, to tell the truth. But 
it would be kind of um well asked backwards to work backwards from an album cover to make an album to fit it but right. at the same time why the hell not <laughs> well you know what? no one's working on his own songs right now i know that and so, i know that i can get you to rap over him and everything with like that smooth jazz voice and everything and make that the album that'd be pretty cool I don't know about my rapping skills. To tell you the truth, I think I'd be uh, closer to um, MF Doom than to you know anybody else that people actually want to listen to. But that's the thing. <laughs> Your style would fit MF Doom, and so does Nolan's Beats. Like, if you look closely, most of Nolan's Beats represent like a little bit of what MF Doom was. This is very true. This is very true. Like, have Nolan send you a beat. And uh, then we can just put it from there and we'll look at it and see if, like, it's the same, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Besides, to tell you the truth, I need to put uh, these USB thumb drives to use. So the next time that he drops by, I'm going to have to go ahead and um, give him one so he can drop some beats onto that. Right. If you can do that, copy that over and I'll give you a flash drive you can put it on, too. Dude, Yeah. That would be freaking fantastic. Oh, man. I, I'm To tell you the honest truth, this is the type of thing that, uh, what was it, say, uh, was it OneDrive and the Google Drive and all that jazz would come in handy, except for the fact that I don't trust any of these motherfuckers. Yeah. With, with any data when you get right down to it, you know? I mean, come on. We can store these things on our own, um, locally on our own computers, on our own thumb drives, on our own hard drives and stuff like that. Right. There is absolutely no flipping reason why you should, you know, basically give up um, said data to a, a server on the cloud in which case, at that point in time, you have no idea and no control and um, and quite literally no legal, um, legal control over what they can do with that stuff. See, my only reason would to do it, to do it would be it's faster. You know, yeah, and, exactly. And stuff, but it is not going to save you right because if they do somehow get legal control over that, you may not have the rights to your own fucking beats. Right. You know, I mean, like, it, it, this is the same thing that um, people have um, learned over, you know, the years with Facebook. It's like, OK, yeah, I, you can go ahead and take your picture and upload it and everything like that. But the simple fact of the matter is they said, you know, and this is something that they can um, enforce legally a lot um, more easily than an individual can is that anything that you upload to them, uh, well, up to their platform, is then theirs. They right. can do with it as they please. You know, they can take it for themselves. They can use it to promote their own platform. They can, uh, well, I, if someone gets it in their head, you know, to, I don't know, be malicious, they can basically blacklist you or uh you know hijack your account and start doing rather nasty things and whatnot it just i uh man <laughs> i get what you mean it's it's a whole like self-struggle too because then you have to make sure that you keep getting everything you know secure and updated right and I, the simple fact of the matter is the uh, one bit of advice that is always going to stay true is if there's something that you don't want someone out there to see or hear, don't record it and don't upload it. Yeah. Please. That's a big thing right now with like uh, back when people's nudes got leaked over Twitter and shit. Yeah. People were always defending the person that took them. But my biggest thing is, like, if you didn't want them out there, why'd you take them in the first place? Exactly, because you know. stupid things happen. Someone can get a whole... Uh, uh, 
like say uh girls um nude uh is like a girl's self nudes get um leaked out onto the internet because of the fact that her ex boyfriend got a hold of her phone right and then starts doing all sorts of stupid things like that she really literally had no control over her boy uh, her ex boyfriend doing that but she had all control over taking those pictures of herself in the first place right it's on both parties at that point it's like i don't know it's like the best way to put it is kind of like when people complain about stds and shit it's like yeah. oh, shouldn't have had sex you know I, that, even yeah. with protection that's like a risk you take and that's how a lot of things go when people come in to work like not sober then they get mad that yeah people call them out on it and it's like well you took that risk when you came in high you know exactly just come into work Last... sober exactly <laughs> please that's all <laughs> <laughs> yep just well, yeah. Stuff. Well, the simple fact of the matter is, I mean, like, um, when you get right down to that um, factor, really the only thing that you can do, uh, the only fair, fair thing that you can do is just tell the person who came in like that, okay, uh, and I, I know I said this the other day, you mm -hmm. know, just um, get something to eat, get something to drink, go sit down in the dining room for an hour, and and then clock back in um af um afterwards. Usually it will um it does wonders, but at the same time, you shouldn't have to tell the person to do that in the first place. Yeah, they just shouldn't come into work that's fucked up to where they can't work. Like when Ron worked and he came into every shift drunk, at least he still worked most of the time. Yeah, this is true. The level of his work wasn't all that great, but at the same time, he did manage to um, go in and um, work his shifts. It's just, yeah. you know, he started losing sight of uh, what his um, balance point was at. Yeah. yeah. That's most people's things. They keep saying that they mess up their work high with their functioning high. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense, you know. But still, it's got to be something that you know your limits, you can control it, you know? Right. Right, right, right. Uh, oh, let's see uh... what's next on the agenda. Well, we could talk about uh, a certain person, which will refrain from saying names of people. Uh, so, fuck, let's call him Kevin. All right? It's not his real name. Mm. Kevin... He's not a good person. He's an asshole. Uh, doesn't take care of himself. Like, really bad hygiene and shit. And uh, is the brother of one of our co-workers. Well, I've recently been told a lot of stories about Kevin from other co-workers. Uh, like how I heard he only... No, wait, no. Never, never brushes his teeth and had to get 12 teeth pulled at the dentist. Oh, Lord. Which I didn't yeah. think was possible. Like, it's, I don't get how people can't brush their teeth. Personally, that kind of smell just, just like, ugh, makes me cringe. Oh, right? yeah, that's just it. I mean, like, come on. A food gets stuck up in there, yeah. guys. And the simple fact of the matter is, if it's stuck up there long enough, it starts to rot. And we all know what happens when things start to rot. Yeah, they start to smell rotting, bad. Like, rotting, where they didn't have to really do, like, tooth extraction. They could just pull was... on them and they'd come out. Like, with their, yeah. like, gloves, you know? Um, oh. Yeah. But, uh, Kevin also doesn't have a full-time job, even though he's not going to school. Uh-oh. Uh I'm not saying you have to have a full-time job, but, I mean, his job's not even temporary his his job is a temp and they told him you'll be fired oh, as soon as we get someone to cover your spot exactly like they told him that <laughs> while he was being hired so that he wouldn't get connected to the job 
<laughs> and he uses Man. this kind of shit to like guilt trip people into giving him stuff. That's why I don't really give him credit for right. like, trying eventually or n- no, not pitying him at all because I feel like there is if you're a not going to put to do the in life and this is something that you have to figure out. You can't pity people. You can't pity people that guilt trip other people. Right. That is definitely the truth. That is. <laughs> but uh, Kevin's sibling, thank God, turned out like a million times better than Kevin. So congrats to them. Not even gonna give a gender on the sibling because I don't want to, you know, give too much information. I respect their privacy. Although they are a little bit on the quiet side. Yes. Um, but they are quiet, but they're very nice. Great artist. Um. That we know, just all around good person. Again, million times better, than Kevin. So, everything that I say about Kevin can no way relate to this sibling. Definitely that's not. That's like usually when you see someone that's fucked up like that, it runs in their family. Like it's kind of like a family learned thing, you know. In many cases, yeah, I I do have to agree with you. Although, oh, man, I'm just hoping that this um, this basically means that the sibling who isn't uh, is like the one that we know that is doing just fine. Uh, you know, the exception uh, is like the the one you know, will continue on something that will basically create a you know a line of nice and better people you know what i mean yeah it breaks the cycle yeah that you're getting at. although i although i do have my uh, doubts currently on that but that's that's my own humble opinion mm. i see what you mean because it is like especially when you see people that are hoarders not saying that kevin's uh parents are hoarders i'm saying like i've recently been watching that show and their children have very bad, like, mental health problems and very bad, like, people skills sometimes because mm. of how they were raised in a, a, a toxic, like, hoarder environment. And so Kevin yeah. uh, kind of gets some of the shit from his mom, who I've heard is also not a great person um, mm. oh. and can sometimes yeah. be, like, worse than Kevin. But their father is father of year that I've heard. Like, Mm -hmm. he does everything that he can for his children, including taking time out of his extremely, like, busy schedule of working multiple jobs and basically only getting 20 hours a week off from work. Like, that's including sleep, eat, like, everything, right? He, like, sleeps in his van in front of the next job so that way he can support his kids. You know, father of the year. Like, honestly, props to this guy for being so fucking outstanding. Uh, yes. Although I century. do have to admit, I am worried. I, I am worried about his. Um, I'm worried about his health, though, long term. Yes. When you get down to it, because you can only do that. Uh, you can only so, keep up that type of pace for so long. But yeah, you know, oh. but he's raising the sibling, which is good, because he does a lot for them. Which is very good. good. And even does enough for Kevin, who, like, it's it's kind of hard to hear about someone that's that bad just basically abusing what they get from someone so good, you know? Yeah. So the dad takes Kevin to get a job, and Kevin loses his fucking government ID that he had gotten 30 yeah. minutes prior. <sighs> and yeah, and then apparently basically took like an hour to find it. Finally finds it. Runs out. I told you this is the one where he was like yeah. bam and just showed the two other people the ID and then ran out of the house, which I thought was super funny. Uh and then <laughs> yeah. goes to the interview and doesn't get the job. <laughs> and that's why ah. having connections at that place. Because he works oh. there. I was like, 
see when it's that bad. Like when you're that bad and can't get a job with all the like benefits oh. that you just had going into it. Come on. Yeah, that that is kind of bad. That's like having Oof. your parent own the company and not hiring you. Yeah. Although I do have to admit, um, props to said company because they have standards. Yes. Not the best but, standards yeah. because the rest of the world yeah. can be kind of creepy. I've had a friend that works there and she said that they would like creep on her and shit and flirt with her. Ooh. And then she uh. went to quit and then they got into her head and then she didn't quit. Oh, God. I hate it when that happens. I hate it when that happens. Gosh. Kind of uh. laugh because I'm like, man, this is what you get for not listening to me. When people listen, don't listen to me about where they should work, they always end up hating it. Happened to Nathan with uh, Texas Roadhouse. You remember that? He quit. And I yeah. said, he'll be back in two months. And I'm not even joking, like almost two months to the day, he came back and he was like, I hated it there. I was like, I knew it. You should just listen to me. And then Kendall, yeah. Carter, Ian, Garrett, all of them went to Sugar Fire. And I was like, you know, I don't think it's going to work out because, look, they're already getting you guys as new hires and people from other places. You guys aren't going to get the hours you want. And they, right. you know, argued with me. And I specifically told Kendall, don't work there. You're not going to like having two jobs, right? You have to either choose that right. or this one. And now here she is kind of freaking out because she had to drop her hours because she was not able to keep up with school and two jobs, which I figured was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, which is exactly the reason why uh, JC was um, basically laying it on very thick about, you know, you still doing the, uh, you still working at Sugar Fire? You, you know, and I'm right. um, basically, you, um, basically doing his level best to coax her back to uh, just being full time at Taco Bell and try to, uh, you know, trying to, convince her that it is actually going to be worthwhile and whatnot right and uh, honestly his uh let's just say um he's got a massive uphill battle to um deal with to be able um to um try and convince you know you guys to stick around yeah. until things are honestly better because you know <laughs> they aren't great now You're right it's like they aren't great now and uh they haven't been great for a little bit and it's just gonna take a lot of uh <laughs> it's gonna take a uh, it's gonna take time and it's gonna take a bit of pain in many a cases because yeah because I'm um, circling back on uh, the first topic that um, we were on, uh, a rehire that is um, going directly to um, management training and everything like that. I'm wondering how they're going to work out. Yeah. Because I'm not doubting, I'm not doubting skill. I, I really am not doubting skill and I'm not doubting energy level and I'm not doubting willingness. I'm just, uh, I'm in severe doubt of attitude. Yes. I think we're talking about the same person. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also that new person in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, apparently, do you remember his name? Is it James? I, I believe it is James, and he uh, worked for uh, he worked for Taco Bell four years ago. So yeah. he he should be able to slot right back into things. Well, he not only worked at Taco Bell four years ago, but worked at Taco mm -hmm. Bell another time as well. <laughs> so, okay, so like he should be fine. Yeah, but apparently he just walked out at like eleven fifty nine the other night. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Like Who was just, closing the other night? Uh, Sarah P, I think. Yeah, oh. Because, yeah, because she said, you know, that's going to kind of 
Like, because he was asking to go home, like, 30 minutes, 40 minutes early and shit. And Sarah P was just like, yo, that's going to screw me over. It's going to be just me and Savannah just to close. And then he walked yeah, out but... that night. So. Oh, God. Yeah, we saw that new <clears throat> fucking desk in the manager's office. And so I was like, holy shit. I was like, not already. Come on. he He's already yeah. worked here before. Well, you see what I'm ta- um, well, you see what I'm talking about. Oh, it yeah, is going to be a long, long uphill battle. Yeah. Speaking of him, I I tried talking to him. I don't know if he's a nice guy or not. Apparently, he like yelled at Kendall, but like in a weird way. Like <gasps> it was kind of like him laughing but yelling at the same time, and like I don't know. Anyway, besides I, that, like kind of like oh, kind of like in um, Brandon style. N- no, like more harsh than Brandon no. style. Oh crap! Brandon was well, at least like a lovable little bear when he did his. Yeah, that was his. I mean, like he could. Like, he tried to like be like, "Oh, you can't get mad at me," you know. <laughs> well, he did try. Uh, he definitely um did his best to um put um. A little bit of sandpaper on the rough edges. Yeah. And so, it's like, apparently, Hmm. well, then I tried talking to him myself, and I was like, oh, so are you, like, trying to get away from Taco Bell? Like, what's going on? Like, what's your life story? You know, asking about himself, right? Because I work better when I know my coworkers. I can actually talk to these human beings. But, um, he just didn't really say anything and then just kind of chuckled and i was like oh god not again like this shit oh, already happened with yeah. Emra, and then now it's happening with another person i'm like why are people just awkward when they talk to me all i'm doing <laughs> is asking about you so that way i know what i can and cannot joke about right like that it's way just... i'm not offending anybody first of all because i don't want to create my own problems at work and uh second of all i don't want to like have to run into manager issues in the future. Right. Oh, boy. Well, it's not like there aren't other people who need work. Yeah. And to tell you the honest truth, um, I'm really thinking that they really need to start. Uh, well, JC really needs to... Well, I... Let's just say, um, put the word out to the college kids. Yes, he needs to advertise because, to yeah, we've got it's like we've got a bunch of them living yeah. right here, and I know that more than a few of them could probably use a little bit of extra um, pocket money when you get right down to it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to convince um, people just to come work for us for a day or two a week. I'm like, we need the people, you know. Yeah, and not to mention the fact that that also actually works to get more people in for business when you get right down to it, yes. too. Because, I mean, like, okay, my buddy works at Taco Bell. Why don't we just go to Taco Bell? Okay, well, let's go to Taco Bell. Boom. You know? I mean, like, hell, even if it, um, even if the first bit of the meal happens to be an employee meal, the rest of it is still fucking, you know more than what you were going to get before right i think it's funny that Not people to... always get curious about how we think about new ways that we could attract customers <laughs> instead <laughs> of like deflecting customers like because we complain about how many customers we get and then we're like but how could we do it better so we get more <laughs> Well, yeah. And, well, I'm going to say this. The way that you get more customers is that you're actually able to provide excellent customer service, which means that you actually have to have enough people on staff and properly managed to accomplish that. Right. Because I like I take pride in being good. Yeah, at Taco Bell. exactly. Which I feel like is a fine thing to do because it's like, there's been quite a few workers that we've had where I can say they were just not good at their jobs. They're just yeah. bad people, like bad workers. Like they just aren't cut out yeah. to work. 
Well, when you get right down to that, it also has to do with whether or not they're actually uh, taking any pride in what they're doing whatsoever. And I mean, like, I'm not saying that you got to take pride in working at Taco Bell. I'm just saying that you got to take pride in accomplishing the tasks that you uh, take part in in Taco Bell. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, like just basically doing them to the best of your ability and doing your uh, and doing oh, and trying to work with other people to the best of your ability. And it's a whole hell of a lot easier said than done, because, dear God, there are people there that I do not want to work with. <laughs> oh, dude, I just I don't think anyone wants to work with them personally. There's one person that no one can stand. Huh. And her name is Kathy. I have no problem saying her name right now. Uh, I used to be like, eh. But then now I'm kind of like, it's fine. Like, she doesn't want As in the shit. room is on fire, it's fine. Yeah. I, I understand. <laughs> Especially since, like, I, yeah. uh, since she doesn't listen to these podcasts and since she hates me for no reason. I feel like it's fine to hate back. Uh, Even though I'm fighting hate with hate, which I don't like, but I've already tried okay. fighting hate with kindness, and that did not work. No. But at the same time, considering the fact that you haven't spent this entire time uh, complaining about her, yeah. um, I would say that You've got a um, decent handle on it. No, because I, I quite like my job. I don't mind yeah. Taco Bell. I, it's, it's not something that I hate going to work to. And it's especially not bad since uh, whenever we will get more people, we're not going to be as understaffed, especially when it starts hitting 3 o'clock. You know, we're at the start right. of dinner rush, basically. JC's trying to I get mean, like 7 or 8 people per shift from 5 um, and on. And that's and you see that's just it. You have to have the proper staffing to be able to uh, to provide the you know proper customer service that gets people coming in and coming back right. and you know being nice. Because if we've got the proper staffing and we've got the proper management, then that also means that nobody, even eight of um, whatever rush that you're in at that point in time is working inordinately hard. Right. You're having fun and you'll do better when you have fun. Like even JC was admitting, he's like, my goal is for people to have fun working here, you know, so exactly. that way they want to come into work and will do better because they like working, you know? Right. So I just don't know why, you know, it had to take this long for them to figure that shit out. Um, unfortunately, it's because of the fact that um, management, upper management, um, shifts up fairly quickly. That's true. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I mean, like the area that you would figure um people would be locked into long term. You know, I mean, like the face of things have changed um uh, tremendously just within the past five years. For goodness sakes. You make a fair point. It's more of a thing where our we've had three area coaches now. Yeah, I've been here for three separate GMs already, and I'm about to be on my fourth. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've seen at least two dozen managers, and probably around fifty to sixty coworkers. And I've only been here for two years. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't imagine what it was like when Kathy first fucking started 20-something years ago. Oh, a lot more low-tech. And in many cases, a bit simpler. Yeah. I get that. It's because, like, I look at it and I'm... I'm just thinking, man, my original crew is not here at all. Like, Brett, Calvin, Barry, the only person I have left that's been here from that original crew is you. Because, like, I wasn't working nights with Sarah P. 
I mean, yeah. Kathy's there, but she's not the cool part of the crew, so. Right. I... Nolan's not there. Nathan's not there. Uh... Timmy's not there. <laughs> Hell, Heather's not there. Second day I came to work, Timmy had a seizure on the fucking floor. Dear God, yeah, that was something that I think we all had uh, really uh, were um, underlying scared of. Yeah, he had, I think, like four or five seizures when he was working there. Yeah, oh, dude. Prime candidate for cannabinoid use. Yeah. And that's what he did. <laughs> I hope he's doing. Uh, it should have calm. Um, it should have calmed things down for him a bit. I hope he's doing better. Yeah. I just wonder how like how people just get up and oh. deal with that, like he did. You know? Dude, yeah. Well, you get used to. Um, honestly, and this is speaking from a person who's uh, experienced them. You, you get used to it. It's like it. I mean you kind of get used to waking up on the floor and like, okay, what happened? Right. Oh yeah. All right. And let's see, do I have any, um, I was like, do I have any crazy bruises or anything like that? And did I break anything? No. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> do I have to, it's like, do I have to change my pants? Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because yes, guys, I'm sorry, but that is a very real thing when it comes to uh, having a seizure. You lose, about. yeah, <laughs> you lose bodily control. So, um, ugh. yeah, we just generally don't talk about that part. You just basically learn to um, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and um, get going. Because even though it's scary as fuck. And scary as fuck for people around you. You still got to keep. Uh, you still got to keep doing what you're going to do. Right. You can't just stop. Right. Which is odd that they have to just kind of like get back used to it, and there's not really anything in place to just be like, all right, give yourself like ten minutes. <laughs> if you really just did go start like working again. He had the seizure online, oh. got up, and then just went back to working. Yeah. I mean, like, he went back to working because the simple fact of the matter is if he went home, he wouldn't get paid for the rest of the shift. That's true. And that's how most people think, too, at Taco Bell especially. You go home, well, you can't get paid. Right. And it's very true, and unfortunately. For me, it used to be just like, Oh, if I go home, I go home. There's nothing wrong with it. But now, like, if I go home, I'm missing a little bit of my paycheck. And it's like, well, I need that yeah. or not. Exactly. It's one of the reasons why I've uh, basically taken the stance of, dude, if, I, if going to work is physically going to cause more issues than, you know, missing um then missing some hours then yeah i'm gonna go ahead and um miss the hours right that way i'm not out for longer right exactly like with um with my back uh, i was hardly um able to move around and if i tried to you know just basically um chow down on painkillers and uh wrap myself up in a um back brace and um continue on uh, my hips would have eventually started grinding bone on bone and I would be out for more than a week. Right. Especially after you try to unload truck. Right. So, I mean, it's one of those things where, all right. Uh, so you either miss, uh, the rest of your shift or a couple of days or you miss an entire week. Right. Really I think I'm going to go ahead. Cons. Exactly. And I, I, I will take a couple of days over an entire week any any time. I think most sane people would. <laughs> <laughs> Except you come in even when you're like, yeah, I know I shouldn't be here. Well, yeah, but you note the fact that I've been getting a bit better about that type of yes, thing. Yes, you have been, and I'm glad. You're no longer slaving yourself way as much for Taco Bell as you used to. 
You're a tough cookie to crack, but I knew I'd be able to distract you from working. Ha. Ah, yes. Now if, I'll, uh, now if only I can get myself back into a gaming groove. Yes. Because, uh, dude, after getting the, um, after getting my computer back and up and running after that driver mishap, I, it just kind of drained me on the whole thing. It's like, I, 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 I okay, fine. Right where you can uh, take a break. Yeah, it's like, okay, I've got it back up and running. I'm just going to marvel in the fact that it's back up and running. And what the fuck am I going to play now? Right. Not touch it so that <laughs> it doesn't break again. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. Maybe, yeah. Well, uh, then again, oh, crap. I might, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get back into fallout four again but i have a nasty suspicion that that was what broke my drivers in the first place (laughs) might have been fallout four is a hefty fucking game for your pc to handle dude it this is the thing i mean like my computer should have absolutely no issues running this thing i mean like i have a ryzen 26 um was it 2700x with 32 gigabytes of ram running at uh what was it on um, was it 3200 megahertz and uh dude uh it has a uh and uh one terabyte nvme um drive on it which is fast as fuck and a um was it amd rx5700 Holy shit. Which I uh, which I am very proud to say I purchased for three hundred dollars. Damn! Before any of all, um, before any of this crap started hitting, as uh, in so far as graphics cards and general um chip shortages were concerned. Right. And this game still fucks with my system. That and uh, Dark Souls three. <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't get it. Recently, I've been playing a game called Autonauts, which I don't know if I told you yeah. about this. Uh, no, I don't know what Autonauts is. It is a little game where you play as a little human and you're landing on a planet, and your goal is just to build your own little like robot civilization, right? And so you yeah. have to go through and automate processes. So one of the first things they teach you is, you know, chop down this tree, build this. Okay, now you can make an axe to chop down this tree to do this, right? right? And what they end up showing you is that now you can build robots. So I have robots that can chop down trees for me, and then I collect the logs. And so as that goes on, the game gets more and more challenging because you have more things you need to work on. So like, ah, such I as a need... robot that charged the other robots. But then gotcha, robot... and then you'd have to care um to collect logs right so like right now in my game i have like 20 to 40 fucking robots and i don't use 20 of them oh because the other 20 are already doing the job pretty damn efficient and now i'm just teaching some different robots how to go over here place this log here into the storage and then place this log into uh you know this thing to make planks and then this one for the planks to make poles and for this one to put this into the store like it's a whole lot so now i'm trying to teach a robot how to train other robots how to do shit so that (laughs) you can go through and automate the process even more oh dude well this sounds again like one of those uh, dude you specialize in these games that seem to um be almost tailor-made for budding programmers when you get right yeah. down to it. Well, it uses complete you know? block-based coding. That's the perfect thing about yeah. it, is it teaches you how to block-based code. Uh-huh. So I feel like if schools were to buy, like if this game had a uh, school-sized bundle, if they bought, mm-hmm. like I don't know, like 20 to 40 copies, which would be like maybe a couple hundred dollars, right? For like one computer lab's computers then oh. they could do that shit and kids that could take computer classes could take 
classes on how to block based code from an early like part in their um, childhood. You know? Yeah, I, I hear you. To tell you the honest truth, that would be a whole heck of a lot of was it more useful to do in computer lab than play Oregon's Trail. And yes, I know I just really <laughs> dated myself there. But um seriously i mean like guys this is a thing i mean in school how many of you have been in a computer lab um class and have done absolutely nothing constructive right. you've done nothing but saying uh you know surf the web or play simple games or whatnot and and not really do anything truly useful whereas a um, with autonauts come on mm -hmm. that makes excellent sense for uh say a kid in say oh i don't know maybe uh uh was it late um elementary school like or fifth, um fifth and middle school you know it's like late elementary um middle school boom you um set them in front of a freaking old computer to be able to play that yeah. you right. might have yeah, yourself some bad. like right uh, a game that's just as simple and cutesy as something like this and like kids as early as like fifth or sixth grade kids you know can play this game and as they go throughout school develop more and more coding patterns and shit like that so that by that time exactly. you have experienced coders going into the like field right after college like extremely experienced people even going into college or high school they already know a exactly. shit thing. they've already got four years of coding behind them you know right or at least four years of experience um understanding the components behind coding even if they decided not to go into it specifically right like in which mine, is i'm learning how different parts of like memory you know for your computer how that kind of shit works. I'm learning how, yep. even for me, like block based coding, I've already done it before, but I'm learning how a computer would read simple processes to me that seem easy to like repeat yeah. on end. But for a computer, it takes a little bit more memory because they don't realize everything that they have to do, you know? <laughs> exactly. I am to, to look into this game. You will love it personally. Okay. I think definitely like, have to. Everything besides, like, the music's fine, but the music's just not my favorite. The music is just there. It gets a little repetitive. Yeah, it's just mainly background noise. So I gotcha. Listening about it. But, no, the game is so much fun because I've spent already, like, within one night, I spent probably about four, five, six hours playing. Oh. Not even meaning to. I, I got distracted. I was like, oh, I'll play this for a little bit. And then I... I got really into it. I'm like, oh, wait, now I got to build these robots that build robots that build robots. Like, right. And then all of a sudden it's three o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh, crap. What right. The... I'm still learning things about the game. So I'm like, exactly. this is not even as efficient as, as it could be. Oh, dude, there is one thing that I have to say, and that is I do love games that actually have you learning stuff. And I'm not talking about just um, stupid ass game mechanics for the sake of game mechanics. I'm talking about learning stuff, you know, stuff uh, that is um, might be trivial, but real, um, but still has real world basis and everything like that. Right. I fully agree. You know, it's one of the reasons why, uh, what was it, as a kid, um, whenever I was um, doing computer gaming, you know, at, I mean, like, um, between 15 to 18 years old, uh, uh, there was this um, series of games from Sierra Online. Um, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Sierra Online, they're the guys who produced King's Quest, mm -hmm. which was... Well, let's just say the grandfather of all point and click adventure games. Right. The grandfather uh, of most now, of your like not like choose your own adventure games, but kind of like uh I know what some of you guys are gonna say. Wasn't that supposed to be Day of the Tentacle? No. The Day of the Tentacle came after King's Quest, guys. Mm -hmm. It's just that Day of, the uh, Day of the Tentacle just happened to have a really crazy-ass sense of humor that people really liked. 
they were attracted to that shit. I mean, they still are. Yeah. Oh, dude, always. But uh, no, King's Quest was basically famous for those bits where you do one wrong thing and you're dead type of thing. Yeah. You know? So uh, it, it let's just say that it was... Um, it, it was souls before souls was even even conceived yeah. type of thing you know and i'm not even talking about tough but fair i'm just talking about just plain tough. you learn from getting um from doing something stupid well not only that like you'd go to the arcade and you'd spend your fucking money on this game oh like but it's they'd go in and you'd end up being like yeah. oh i'll play and you get like what three chances or something Oh, dude. Well, I, I mean, come on, arcade game. Ooh. You know what? That is um, that's something that could be a subject for another podcast because the, I've got some things um, to say insofar as arcade gaming and how um, that actually affects modern day gaming, or at least uh, was concepts from arcade affecting um, today's gaming society. See, but um. Yeah, but uh, next episode, I agree. Yeah, but to get back to what I was uh, originally tracting with, uh, they uh, um, Sierra Online also released a series of games called Heroes Quest, which was um, which basically put you in the role of the quote unquote hero who um, basically gained their um, limited skills through a correspondence course mm -hmm. and is on their way to you know the um their first guild hall and um try and find their first quests and everything like that well in any case uh each of these uh heroes quest games are set in uh, very distinct locations uh the first one i would have to say would be uh uh, Dutch and Germanic in um, its flavoring. Uh, the second one, uh, which was called Trial by Fire, was uh, uh, more inspired by Knights of Arabia type of setting. So you're talking about um, running around in the desert with um, Bedouins wielding curved swords and stuff like that. Uh, the third one, if I remember correctly, was um, set in what you could approximate as the northern, um, um, the northern half of the continent of Africa, basically mm -hmm. stretching, um, basically stretching from uh, what was a uh, Egyptian stylized um, culture to. Uh, what you would find on the um to what you would find on the west coast of the african continent and then from there they um for all unlikely purposes you are transported to some place um called moldavia which is basically um uh transylvania or a uh, slavic region okay. which basically concentrated on again um slavic ideas and traditions and whatnot and then the final one um ends up in the granddaddy of what we call western civilization which would be uh something that was based off of uh the greek ideas insofar as what we're um insofar as what we're familiar with mm -hmm. insofar um with like ancient of the ancient greeks each of these games were set in, like I said, uh, very distinct locations and very distinct, uh, what do you call it, uh, cultures. And right. the people who actually uh, went ahead and wrote these games and created these games also, you know, did research into um, those various things so they could actually put a little bit of flavor into, um, into these things. So, I mean, while I'm, it's like, while I'm busy spitting um, milk out, out of my nose at um, the crazy ass, um, what do you call it, of 
uh, Mon- uh, Monty Python right. um, style humor of the first uh, Heroes Quest game. I was also um, set back on my haunches with the fact that I actually learned a bit of uh, what is it called? Um, dang it. Uh, well, it's been a long time since I've um, played any of these games, but uh, there was a trade language that was used throughout uh, Northern Africa, uh, Swahili. That's right. Uh, um, I actually, um, I actually learned Swahili from the third game, which was set cool. in northern, um, which was set in the northern African region. I got to learn a lot of um, interesting bits about uh, Slavic, uh, what do you call it, um, culture and uh, the what is it, uh, different beliefs that they had um insofar as like uh was it um home and hearth spirits of uh nasty things that go bump in the night and or rather um drowned women that would uh, you know appear from the lake that they were drowned in right um basically you know lure you in for a kiss and then drown you Mm -hmm. basically sirens yeah, but it's uh, it, it, it's a different. T- uh, I mean, like it's the same idea, but it's a different execution. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's like um, sirens, and that actually goes right back to uh, was it uh, Greek mythology, which you know the um, which that series of games even cycles um through. Uh, like you said, um, sirens, and if I remember what I was um, talking about in the Slavic uh, culture, Rusalka. Um, uh, the Rusalka is supposed to be the spirit of a, a woman who was drowned. Um, um, and basically, because of the fact that they were drowned for no real reason, they um, live well they exist on as a malevolent spirit that you know calls in people and drowns them right in that fashion um you know it and it's not through um song like a siren or anything like that it's more along the lines through um what is it seduction Mm -hmm. type of thing i mean then again i mean let's just say if you're uh if you've been living in um what would be known as eastern european um as eastern europe now uh it's harsh conditions and everything like that and you take what you, uh, you take what little niceties that you can get when they present themselves well let's see if a naked woman a uh, naked woman pops up out of a lake and presents herself in front of you you're just going like ah uh, it it really does. I mean, like in that case, it really doesn't take much coaxing. <laughs> but I mean, that also at that point in time also lets you know um, the sensibilities of the cultures of um, Eastern Europe. Right. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, OK, guess what? Uh, it, it, the world is a day da- uh the world can be a dark and dangerous place sometimes you have fun for the uh it's like sometimes you have fun and you have fun sometimes you have fun you let your guard down you die it, it, that's just the way it goes and it's i gotta admit that cavalier attitude that i um that i think a lot of us in the west really actually honestly like about them right when you get down to it now i i i think that most of us are confused in so far as um what we uh what we like about this because i mean like there isn't a one of us who actually likes um living in harsh conditions no hell no but to tell you the truth the only way that one can actually enjoy life the way that these guys enjoy life is for life to be harsh. Mm. I get that. It's just like an interesting type of thing to think about. 
Yeah. Of how but I'm sorry. Act yeah. the way that they act, you know, compared yeah. to other uh, nations and other cultures. Right. But man, I'm sorry I got so um, sidetracked as far as that was concerned. Basically, what I was trying to, uh, the point that I was trying to make was the thing that I like about video games the most is whenever they actually teach you something about the world around you. In an, uh, it might be in an indirect fashion, but if you know something about the world that you can actually use in the world from something that is supposed to be uh, supposedly a kid's toy, I think it's pretty cool. Right. And it's all a good game sidetrack. That's kind of what this podcast is about. It's just a bunch of sidetracks on sidetracks on sidetracks, you know? Yeah. But I think that's a good place to end off this episode of the podcast uh catch us next time with nito uh or the next episode with nito that we'll have we'll talk about arcade consoles and stuff like that and video games more specifically and how they've changed oh, yes. uh almost definitely thank you all for joining us if you stay tuned i uh, hope you guys like this and see you guys next time take it easy guys <laughs>